This is the gospel message, and I just pray that you will open your heart and let it change your life. We were fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God to declare his glory and reveal his majesty. The problem is that one of the angels of God wanted to be higher than God himself, and therefore this angel was cast out of heaven, becoming the fallen angel, or as we know him, the devil. One day in the Garden of Eden, there was Adam and Eve, the first humans, and the fallen angel appeared to them in the form of a serpent and tempted them to sin against God, and they did, causing mankind to fall. God was angered and he casted Adam and Eve from the garden and told the serpent that he was going to send one who would crush the serpent's head and the serpent would bruise his heel. You have to understand that we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and because of that, we all deserve an eternal separation from God, which is hell. 
But God loved the world so much that he became man, and that man's name was Jesus Christ. Jesus lived a perfect and sinless life by fulfilling all the requirements of the law in order to become the perfect sacrifice for our sins. He was spat on, mocked, and beaten, and people even gambled over his clothes. He was whipped to the point where his flesh was torn from his body and a crown of thorns was crushed into his skull. He was then forced to carry his cross to the site where he would be nailed to it. Jesus then used his last bit of energy after hanging on the cross for several hours to say, It is finished. And then he commended his spirit to the Father. Jesus was then buried. But three days later, he rose from the grave, conquering sin and death. Don't you see? God passed the law that would cause the Jews to sentence his incarnate form to death. The law was the schoolmaster to lead us to Christ and allow us to see our need for a savior. The law was a shadow of good things to come. The promise came before the law. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. This is our savior. Now whosoever believes in Jesus Christ as your savior by trusting in his life, death, burial, and resurrection will be saved. He will take on your sin and you will take on his imputed righteousness. This is the love of God that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Call out to him today. Confess him as your Lord. When you trust only in the blood of Jesus Christ to be your salvation from sin, you will be sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise as a down payment of guarantee of eternal life until the day of deliverance. The Holy Spirit is the seed of God which is planted in you by Jesus Christ through faith in Him. This is what allows you to be presented before a holy God as blameless. The Holy Spirit then baptizes you into the body of Christ, making you part of the ecclesia, meaning the church or the called out ones. Your heart will be circumcised and you will be sanctified, meaning you will be set apart from your flesh. We are eternally secure in him because he who begins a good work in us will be faithful to complete it. And daily we will work out our salvation with reverent fear and rejoice and trembling as we conform to the image of Jesus Christ. We become disciples of Jesus and that discipleship journey will look different for everyone. So do not compare yourself to other Christians, but only to Jesus Christ because he is the only standard we strive for. Repent today, that is to turn towards Jesus. Do not let man deceive you into thinking that you must drop all your sins before you come to Jesus. Jesus wants you to come just as you are because he came to call the sinners to repentance, not the righteous. Those who are given to him by God and seek him, he shall in no way cast out. Stop clinging on to the branches of religion and instead come to know the true vine, that is Jesus Christ, because without him, there is no victory, there is no deliverance, and there is no healing. We can do nothing without him. He is our savior from the penalty of sin. He is our savior from the power of sin. And eventually he will be our savior from the presence of sin. He himself took on the penalty of sin your sin, that you would find forgiveness and redemption from your sin today. He desires a relationship with you, and heaven is waiting to rejoice when you turn to him. Receive the free gift of salvation today through faith in Jesus Christ, and enter through the narrow gate that leads to eternal life with your heavenly Father. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your grace. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your mercy. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for another day. Blessed be your holy name. We worship you.
worship and adore you. We bow down before you. Thank you, Lord, for all of your wondrous provision. Thank you, Lord, for all of the things that we see that you have done in our lives. And we thank you for the 10,000 other things we don't even recognize. Blessed be your holy name. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your love. We thank you that you established our lives. We thank you, Lord, that you have set aright our day, that you order our steps, that you have realigned our lives. We thank you, Lord, for your recognition. We thank you, Lord, for your understanding. We thank you, Lord, for your tender mercies. Thank you. Above his name there is no other name The one who is eternally the same There is no other name The first, the last, beginning and the end he was the king who made the common man his friend. There is no other name. Let every tongue proclaim and sing the name of Jesus. Magnify and praise the name. Of Jesus, no other name but Jesus. There's power in the precious name of Jesus. Jesus, Messiah, King of kings and Lord of lords. Jesus. He created all that is with his own hands, and yet the smallest need he understands. There is The one who said, I am the great I am. And then he gave himself the sacrifice for man. There is no other name. Let every tongue proclaim and sing the name of Jesus.
precious name of Jesus, Jesus. Forever he shall reign as King of kings, Lord of all and every living Praise the Lord, beloved of the Most High God, in the mighty name of King Jesus. How is everyone this lovely Wednesday, October 26, 2022? It can't be. It cannot already be almost the end of October. Where did the month go? Wow. How is everyone this evening? I hope you are all doing very well and hanging in there. We are in the middle of the week, otherwise known as hump day. Get over that hump and slide on into the weekend or the strong end, if you prefer. Sure is a whole lot of craziness going on in the world, right? Can you guys hear me okay before I get started? Man, sometimes I get fired up and pray and everything and then go. I see in the chat because I, I, it's kind of hard to, for me to remember to pay attention to the chat when I get to rolling. <laughs> and and it'd be like, we can't hear you. We hear nothing at all. I'm like, okay. And when did that start? <laughs> and that was a really good prayer. But hey, since it ain't a show. The prayer still works. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. And alleluia goes right there. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. All right. Praise the Lord. Glad to see you in here, Spider Monkey. Praise the Lord. I'm going to say hi to everybody in a second. Let's go ahead and begin with prayer before we get started. Dear Lord Jesus, we come before you this evening thanking you and praising you. For another day and another opportunity to extol your glory in the earth. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you and praise you for this opportunity. For fellowship to come together in the chat and here on the podcast. With one another and encourage and uplift one another in these dark times. And Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to let our light shine. In this darkness, in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you and praise you that we are clothed and in our right minds in this present age when we are dealing with the forces of darkness that might come against them, us, and we rebuke them in Jesus' name right now. The blood of Jesus is against you devils, and we thank you for that, Lord. 
And Father, we encourage one another, those that are shut-ins, those that are disabled, those that are hurting, those that are laying in their bed of affliction. We pray for them and lift them up before you right now, Lord, and pray that they be encouraged and strengthened right now in their mortal bodies in Jesus' name. And that any mental affliction, oppression, depression, agitation, vexation, spiritual warfare attacks against them, we rebuke you right now in Jesus' name. We bind the forces of darkness away from us in Jesus' name. And we ask, Lord, that you send your ministering spirits to minister on our behalf as you have declared in your word. And we thank you for it. We know you're doing it. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that we have you, King Jesus, our high priest, ever living to making intercession for us. Thank you, Lord, for standing in the gap for your saints. And Lord, we thank you for your grace, 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 mercy, 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 peace, peace, peace. And Lord, if necessary, judgment. Thank you, Lord. We ask all these things in Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. Before I get too far down the road in my thank yous and hellos, let me let me go to my opening passage cuz I'll forget. <laughs> this is the theme for the podcast and I took a break last week. To just spend some time before the Lord and ask him which direction he wanted me to go. And boy, did I went, witness some crazy stuff in this last week. Just some weird stuff. Oh, my goodness. I see what the Lord was talking about in the last days. There was going to be a famine in the land. Well, thank the Lord for his provision, even in famine. Thank you, Jesus. Second Corinthians chapter 2 excuse me, chapter one, verse two, second Corinthians chapter one, verse two, grace be to you and peace from God, our father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, even the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the father of mercies and the God of all comfort who comforted us in all our tribulation that we may be able to comfort them, which are in any trouble. By the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer. Or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as you are partakers of the sufferings, so shall you be also of the consolation. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you, Lord. Woo, aren't you glad? We actually lift each other up in our afflictions can use that even as teaching and learning and sharing and blessing one another in affliction. I've often said it, I'll say it again right here. If you're going through like depression, ugh, the enemy, ugh, just yuck. If you're going through that lowliness, did I just hide my own notes? I think I did. Hold on a second. <laughs> Praise you, Jesus. Okay. There it is. Give me the good old piece of paper and, and a pencil. Yes, Jordan, they still make those. You know, back from the covered wagon days. Uh, For the lonely. Yep. Okay, that's it. And that depression thing, since sometimes, look, the first thing we shouldn't read... I'm not telling you not to do anything, but it shouldn't be the first thing you reach for is some pill somewhere. The first thing you want to do is cry out to the Lord in your affliction 
and prayer still works. And if you feel so heavy and I've been there, so I can talk about, I've been there. You feel so heavy that you feel, I can't pray. Man. I can't pray. Then praise. I'll say it before. I've said it before. I'll say it again. And I'm probably going to say it a thousand more times. Praise will lift that heaviness because we are promised in the Bible that the Lord inhabits the praise of his people. How in the world is depression going to stick around when you start praising? So I don't care what it feels like. You may feel like you got a boulder. I, I literally describe it as a boulder, like on your chest. You just feel like this heaviness. Begin to praise. Go get you some good gospel music. And I ain't talking about none of that junk. Most of that modern stuff is crap. But anyway, you find something that uplifts your spirit. If you have to just, you know, those old church songs and you sing, get you two or three of those and start singing them and sing them over and over again and praise the Lord and watch and see if that heaviness don't lift. And then you can pray. And you pray against the enemy and the forces of darkness. This junk. I keep getting these people trying to play this game with me, emailing me and dropping me comments. Talking about we ain't supposed to rebuke and bind the devil. Say, you roll with that. Don't come telling me nothing. If that's how you want to live and that's the, how you think you're supposed to get down as a believer, you roll with that player. Let's see how far you get. I think they're agents of the devil. I truly do. If you're misguided, then get right and understand we are in a battle. And I wanted to talk tonight about those psychic attacks that happen. And you may not realize it is an attack. So I'm just going to talk about a few of the things that I've noticed that end up happening. You don't really realize it's an attack of the devil. And, you know, no, I don't believe the devil is under every rock, but just about. Maybe every other rock. I was watching some people tonight talking about one of these particular corporations. I only watched for a few minutes because I'm like, this is not even really news, in my opinion, because name one that isn't connected, right, to you know who. Name one. If they're big, if they're huge, how do you think they, how do you think they got in the billionaire boys club? It wasn't being connected to the love and light of Christ. I can tell you that. He makes sure we have what we need, but all that old craziness, y'all, y'all have seen them. They used to do that mess to agitate everybody. They had a show. Was it back in the? I think it was the either late eighties, early nineties, uh, somewhere in there. Lifestyles of the rich and famous. That stuff is just meant to agitate everybody, make you hate the rich. It's just meant to agitate everybody. When you can open your refrigerator and you got enough. When you got a nice, comfortable bed to sleep in, a peaceful place to lay your head. You know, when you look around and you assess the blessings of the Lord, that stuff is to make you ungrateful. And the Bible talks about a godly contentment. And this is what they want to do is agitate you to be dissatisfied and discontent. Then you start griping, you start murmuring, start complaining. Then you start, God forbid, any of that but then also what is the other one uh thou shalt not covet <laughs> oh my goodness what they said they said we don't we don't even realize a lot of that stuff is mental attacks all of it detracts from the ways of the lord most of us have realized that by now that junk that we see on televi television is meant to get us agitated, upset, distracted. That's why you should be very selective what you watch. And if you do watch it, always with your spiritual hat on. So you can go, that ain't of God. Watch how, just do it one time. Pick a show. Whatever your so-called favorite show is. Those of you that still watch TV. I know some of y'all that got rid of that witchcraft box. Be like, I don't even have one in my home. Well, praise the Lord. You're more, you're more spiritual than the rest of us. I tell you. If you are watching something and you start just adding it up. Just. If you know your Bible, and this is good training to know your Bible, be like, that's against God. And that's against God. 
And I bet you can't get through one program without 10 things being against the Lord and just little things that they've said out of their mouth. <laughs> These little, little, I call them micro digs. They got micros and macros. We saw a macro from Kurt Franklin just recently, right? A direct attack against Christ. Well, we know what camp he's in now. There ain't no hiding it. Ain't no, <laughs> ain't no hiding it. You want to tell, you're going to say that the lamb is going to bow before the uh, Pope. Yeah. Um, no, mm -mm. We, we know what camp I knew. Listen, <laughs> going all the way back. The first time I saw eyeliner on him on one of them album covers, I said, that's it right there. <laughs> note, note and avoid. I was like, uh, uh, no way. No way, Jose. I knew it. I said, that's all I needed to see. Yes. One of them album covers or videos, I don't remember which, he had eyeliner on. You know, under your eyes. See, women women should have picked up on it. I don't know. Men should have picked up on it, too. I mean, you got wise. I know you don't wear it, but right under the eye, okay? Over the eye, you might not catch because it'll make the eyelash look fuller. That's one of them little makeup tricks and tips that they do. But under the eye. And I went, what? <laughs> I was like, oh, heck no. All right. Whatever floats your boat, you got to stand before the living God. But I know you ain't supposed to be putting that in, out in front of the youth, especially. So anyway, I knew he was fake going way back. And then starting discovering that these high level witches, excuse me for the smack, uh, it, it's warranted. These high level witches, y'all, can preach in the name of Jesus. I, you know, I was skeptical when I first heard that because we know there's power in the name of Jesus. The thing is, they're not calling on that power. All right. They're not calling on, when we call on Jesus, we are calling on his authority and his power. And that's why he shows up. They're using it as blasphemy and mock. Oh, they're going to pay. Uh, you remember the scripture talking about you shall not, thou shall not <laughs> take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. What do you think they're doing? But I first heard that from a seven day of Venice named Walter Vaith. Now I was looking into some other stuff about these false names and he had a video about it showing that Yahweh was Satan's name in reverse and told y'all that's the devil. And they put it in the <laughs> They put it in the Masoretic text. Jehovah and Yahweh are the same name. So I was looking into that and he talked about how high level witches can preach in the name of Jesus. And you never know they're talking about Lucifer. I'll be honest. I disbelieved him when he said it. I marveled. I was like, for what? No. In the last few years since seeing that. It's true, y'all. It's true. You said, well, how can we know? Thank you for asking that question. It's a good question. How can we know between a real saint of God and them? Because of the witness of Christ. That's how you know. And his Holy Spirit that lets you know whether or not somebody is indeed connected. And sadly, a lot of these people, they are, I, see, I feel so bad. I'll be like, these poor believers, man. You know, because they searching and they, the thing is, they didn't got caught up in that conditioning from the world, really. To name chase or uh, uh, celebrity chase kind of stuff. And they just got the Christian flavor into that. Let me go over here to my comments in a second. But, you know... <laughs> They just and so I remember back in the day there was a preacher in a church I attended. He used to get so agitated because our church wasn't too far from the Long Beach Convention Center. And whenever one of these naming and claiming, blabbing and grabbing, snatching and catching, hoping and groping, I got another one, y'all. Fake it till you make it. Folk came to town. Church would be would be empty. Apologies, my alarm there. The church would be empty. Now here's this preacher, and this is what he talked. He he got agitated one Sunday and let him have it, and he should have, <laughs> because on a Friday night, because most of those conventions they come in they on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. 
They there for three, excuse me, for three days, and then they disappear. And you know, the uh, which we didn't know at the time, the tide wasn't biblical because everybody been taught that. We didn't know, but the offerings to get funny. Ain't nobody there. You see the same maybe ten people that you normally see when it would normally maybe be fifty or sixty people in a small church, and they all at the convention center and he used to get agitated because he's like he he got on the church that i think it was that sunday after friday they weren't there and then some people skipped what they were supposed to do on saturday and tended to the needs of the church and then sunday he said you know what hey i think he took his bible i don't think i don't remember if he even had a service <laughs> kind of just put his bible to the side and said why don't y'all call that person that just came to town when your child is sick and when your, your mother, father, God forbid, whoever family member just died or when you laying up in the hospital because, you know, that's where you ran just because they came to town and left the, <laughs> left the church house empty. While you out there believing they're going to do something for you that Christ can't do for you right here. And I remember that and I was like, he, he do got a point. He had a point. Because he was frustrated because here he is day in, day out, day in, day out as the pastor. And then they just take off. And most of those people. We didn't know it then. I mean, some of us did. You just got, like I said, a check in your spirit. I don't have no other thing. I didn't get no download going, this is why they're fake. And this is why. No, it was just leave them people alone. And then once these expose videos come out, literally 20 years later with the dawning of the internet, start showing how they fake and they setting up fake things. And they had uh, exposés where there were people who were showing up in wheelchairs for these fake healers, because they're not faith healers, they fake, and they'd turn them away because they weren't part of the show. They were real people in wheelchairs. You know, that kind of stuff. So, anyway, how did I get on that? Talking about these fake folk. I wanted to talk about spiritual psychic attacks i had somebody tell me that they woke up like from this i don't even know if you could call it a dream um sometimes they they are dreams witches can mess with you in your dreams that is real and it doesn't necessarily mean you're doing anything wrong in fact it's more an indicator you're doing something right unless you know you over there messing with some stuff that you ain't got no business messing with. If you messing with the demonic stuff. You know. Because Christians do stupid stuff. Okay. Let me get out my horoscope. That stuff is witchcraft. Ain't no Christian supposed to be reading no horoscope. We get our instructions from the Lord. Not. Oh you shouldn't go out today because. <laughs> that stuff is witchcraft. Or oh, what sign are you? The sign of the cross. What are you talking about? What sign am I? Okay, but this this is the kind of stuff that Christians do. Remember now, it don't mean they not saved because in Corinthians, you see where these people have been saved for at least two years. And then Paul instructs them and they bring in a witchcraft books and all they junk. And I told you all there used to be a time in the church, but most people don't go to church anymore. That they would do a purging. And they would recommend and they would even tell them in new members class, go through your house and get that crap out of there. Little stupid statues. Uh oh, I'm going to get in trouble here. Whew. I'm going to say it. Yeah, I'm going to say it. Idols without the eye. <laughs> Dolls are idols, y'all. I'm going to get. Dolls are idols. So some people, you don't bought stuff and you don't know this stuff. Some of this stuff is put out by witches. 
literally. My mother and I were watching a very well-known shopping channel. One night, we just happened to be on the phone together. And I said, I don't know if I called her or she called. No, I don't think she called me. She rarely calls me. I usually call her. We on the phone talking. And they had on a jewelry they were <laughs> presenting. I can tell you the brand name right now. I'm not, I'm not going to do it because I'll have to describe what they did. And you'll know. They were talking about the evil eye and the all seeing eye. And they had the jewelry. And do you say what I'm seeing? She's like, yes. And then the hosts are talking about how they used it to get a job. And others, I'm like, I can't. Putting it right in your face and people calling in with testimonials, which I think are rigged anyway, and saying, oh, yes, I need this. And it just helps me. So and we go witchcraft <laughs> selling the jewelry. So y'all be very careful and prayerful when you're out there buying jewelry. A lot of jewelry is put out by witches. Bless your stuff. I don't care if you ordered it. From a Mason, I'm excuse me, Amazon. I, I don't care if you ordered it from them. Bless it. Okay, be very careful, prof. Don't get no weird looking symbols. You'll be surprised when I was going over just doing some cursory research on well, I was looking for an image for tonight's podcast, and I go to unsplash a lot to use some of my content. They got free uh, images that you can use that are under their copyright. So you can use them. And when I typed in psychic, you know, it was mostly because I was trying to decide if I was going to put one up. I didn't want to use none of that junk for psychic attacks. But this is what you're going to have to do is what this gentleman is doing in, in the image here. Pray against that garbage. Can you believe this? People, we, they email me going, we're not supposed to engage in me. Oh, so I'm not supposed to pray against a witchcraft. Who do you think you talking to with that foolishness? I can't, but I try it though. Like just, just go, please leave me alone. Then they have your sleep disturbances. Okay. If that stuff is happening to you, y'all need to start praying. Rebuking the devil in Jesus name. Yes. You know, where was it? I just had it up. Hold on. This one. See that? That's why I put that line there under that name. Name above all names. This is how we shut them up, y'all. With all these false names. Okay, fine. Keep your false names. You see the name that's above every name. We actually got scripture for it. So let them say all these false names if they want to. We're using the name that is above every name. I am just, I just too disgusted with the church. Allowing these false names in. And y'all wonder why people is messed up, jacked up, get, ain't got no peace. D it, don't even get me started. Can't fight against the devil because they accepted these false names. There ain't no power in those names. Mm -mm -mm. Sudden fear when you're awake or asleep. But I started to say, I I'll get to sudden fear in a second. About a psychic attack where a gentleman told me it just like hit him. Bam. Why hit And he was like, what the heck was that? I said, you, we had did a podcast. And I said, that's what's called <laughs> spiritual warfare. You want to get in. I told you pray before, pray after, because when you are standing against the enemy, First of all, just preaching the gospel. I have warned people. I've said, look, find that you want to make a video and preach the gospel. But understand, I don't want to make you afraid. The devil don't want that. The one message he don't want is you preaching the gospel. Pray for these preachers and teachers that are out here speaking the truth. Because the devil 
lobs attacks. The gospel is the only message that saves. And he don't want men saved. He don't care. You come out here and talk about naming it, claim it, blab it and grab it, snatch it, catch it, open it, grope it, fake it till you make it until the end of the age and he's satisfied. Because that message don't save anybody. So you see why I keep trying to tell people, y'all seeing what people with all this flat earth junk. Will you get back to the gospel, saint of God, please? Now people say, well, I'm using this to wake people up. Is that what the Lord said to do? Now I know they'll go, well, Paul said, you know, I'm a, I can know how to be a base and a bound and I can do, I can be all things to every man. I get that. And if you can enter into a conversation, you start up the conversation wherever you started, but the message that should get delivered is the gospel because it's the only one. It is the only message that is to the lost that can save. Oh my goodness. The most important message. The most important message. What you think? Let's put it in just basic terms. If somebody is lying on their deathbed, you're going to talk to them about flat earth? I didn't say we, we as believers can discuss a million and one things. Why? We are saved. If God forbid we killed over in the next 10 seconds and die, we never even taste death. Our body just dropped. Absent from the body, for your body hit the ground. You present with the Lord. We have lost nothing. The world cannot afford that. Okay, where was I? So be prepared that if you are going to stand in the truth, which is the word of God in Christ, preaching, teaching, sharing, be prayed up. And you need to start learning how to fast because it creates by fasting and prayer, a hedge of protection around you spiritually. If y'all coming under demonic attack, you're actually probably doing something right. Again, like I said, unless you know you've been messing with the devil stuff, in which case leave the devil stuff alone. That's a warning sign. Leave that stuff alone. Okay. Oh, well, you're just being legalistic. I can just sin as much as I want. And look, y'all can roll with that till you get that big fat knot. Because see, right now you're probably just getting little slaps because God is gracious. When you get that big fat knot upside your head. From him saying, okay, you, you don't want to listen. All right. He will allow the devil to smack you. And then you're going to be like, let me get my butt back over here where I belong. Go, you roll with it. You won't get far. You his child. You're the Lord's child. Some of y'all already know, you know, I'm telling the truth because, because it happened to you. Still love you. Happened to me. I'll be honest. That's why I can't stand it when people come on here and play like when they come on YouTube, they're just the most saintly, the most God. And just never. Oh, okay. All right. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We need to we need to be real with folk. That's why I, t I tell it I can't stand it. This ain't no show. If it's a show, then it's fake. All right. Sleep disturbances, sudden fear we covered. Worrying. That's another one. Worry is of the devil. That, that was when, when you'll start getting into obsessive stuff. Now, I was researching that word obsession. Obsession is a precursor to possession. Now, I know a devil, uh, a believer cannot be possessed by a devil. But here's here's the thing. And I tried to talk this talk about this one night on late night with Lisa and friends, but it wasn't being received by by some. They didn't want to really hear this because they are under the impression that a believer cannot be bound by anything. And that's not true. Says so from the outside. Not the inside. But when the Lord, I truly believe when he's talking about binding the strong man and gives that example before you can spoil that strong man's goods, you have to first bind him. 
Well, when you bind somebody, isn't it from the outside? I mean, we've seen every movie on earth. They always put that wickedness out in the world. If somebody gets kidnapped and then they tie them up, it's from the outside, right? Duct tape, rope, chains from the outside. And this is how Christians get bound because they went and they was messing with the devil stuff and then whatever it is. And then they get bound with it's an abuse of some substance or some practice they're doing, whatever it is. And you get bound from the outside. And mostly it's, it's a binding too of the mind <laughs> because then that thing becomes their pet sin. Man, some, some people got pet sins. They're like 800 pounds. You know, it started off as a puppy. <laughs> now it's a gorilla. And then they bound and they need help to get out of that thing. But to be honest, listen, the Bible says greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. If they would make a quality decision and quit playing games and call a thing a thing, a sin, a sin. The Lord's word is enough to get you free. Now, some people done got so weak in the mind which is where most of our battles take place that they do need help and assistance to get unbound. And we should always be willing to help them. I have no problem with that. But for those who go, well, I'm in a little small town, even have nobody in it. First of all, stop messing with the devil stuff. Second, be honest. That is sin. Quit playing games and call a thing, a thing, Get into the book, take a look, blow the dust off it, open up. See the scriptures concerning that matter. Guaranteed if it's sin is in here. And then stand in the truth of the word of God about who you are in Christ. Remember that that's all junk connected to the old man. Put off the old man and put on the new man, which is renewed after the knowledge in the word of God. The knowledge of Christ. That's how we transform is getting into the word. If you remember right here in the Bible, Elijah, after he went up against Jezebel's wicked <laughs> high priest, which is... <laughs> <laughs> and defeated them mightily. Then she lobs a psychic attack against him. And you can find that in Kings, 1 Kings 18, and also 19. And had him with being, you know, fear and discouragement. And, it's, and they send these attacks to silence your prayers and your voice. That's how these witches get down. It is true. Your problem is witches. When you get in attacks <laughs> and you don't even know, y'all, we don't even know. We could be living, unless you see, if you pay attention if you're walking through your neighborhood or driving through your neighborhood and you're just tooling and you see these weird, they'll post them on telephone poles, weird symbols, faces, things that don't seem to make sense. More than likely that's them declaring their territory, witchcraft stuff. Or it's, it's also according to some a way for them to open a portal to the demonic. Yes, there are people that are in lockstep with the devil working as agents of Satan. Literally, as we pray against witchcraft and against the forces of darkness, they're trying to open it up. Y'all seen it. People done tons, tons of videos about it, how that's what CERN was supposed to be about and all that. Right. So. They're working against our God. We're working against theirs. The devil. 
shooting pains. I was talking to a sister one night. We were just on the phone talking. And she said, oh, my goodness. I said, what's wrong? She said, I just got this pain. I don't remember what part of her body it was. She said, it was just a shooting pain. I said, wow, that really hurt. I said, sweetheart, I said, that might be a satanic attack, a psychic attack. I said, take your hand right now, wherever that pain was, if you can reach it, and act like you're pulling that out of you. And, and say, in Jesus' name, and, and throw it. I return to sender, and I'll be like, put whatever fire on it you want, Lord. In Jesus' name. And she did that, and instantly that pain she was having went away. She said, Lisa, that worked. I said, look, I had to learn that one. Babies, they send fiery darts, shooting pains. It's real. And you don't assume that it's not that. Okay. It don't have to be that, but it very well could be that. If you do that and it goes away, that's what it was. Because it happens instantly. It's gone. Family blowups, agitation between spouses and children and craziness. Sometimes you can even you can even see it coming. Uh, that some argument is going to ensue or something. That's the devil. And it can be a psychic attack. The devil going to look for the weakest link in the family to agitate and then stir up everybody else. And you need to begin to pray and praise. And rebuke the forces of darkness. If you need to remove yourself from the situation. Do it quickly. Don't even. Okay. You can go outside and pray. Uh, that happens. Those psych psychic attacks can come that way. Sudden loss. Like. Uh, you know. You're driving and in a brand new tire is flat you know it's an attack in your for your finances and what's going on and also to disturb your peace it is a discipline not to get discouraged but what does the bible say in everything give thanks but this is the will of god in christ jesus concerning you right this is what we're supposed to do that one took me a little while to learn but it is needed. We need to do it. Literally get out. You had a flat tire. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You're going to get me through. I'm going to have everything I need to make this work. And it's going to go smoothly. Thank you, Lord. It's because the devil's trying to disturb you. Peace. Rob you. You're like, thank you, Lord. I thank you in advance. I ain't got a nickel in my pocket. I thank you in advance for the provision for this tire. Just, we have to stand. The just shall live by what? Faith. Thank you, Lord. And you do that. And I don't care if you don't have anything. I don't care if you don't have the tire. I don't care if you don't have the tire stuff to change it. God will make a way. I have seen him do it. He'll get you through it. It might even be an exhausting day, but you'll get home and you'll be like, Whew, the Lord got me through. Here I am. I'm still here. And I'm, you know, got my ride home and everything. I I'm, I'm made it. Praise the Lord. The other thing is pray before you go to sleep. Don't just, I don't care how tired you are, jump into bed and go to sleep. Especially if you know you are somebody that's standing for the truth. Thank the Lord. Pray before you go to bed. And especially if you have been encountering attacks. If you see the devil being active, we should be praying always. Bible says pray without ceasing. Should no believer have a problem with prayer? What? What's wrong with you? Get your mind right. We should always be praying. I have a meme for that. A B P always be praying. 
I don't need to read. Let's pray. Bless your food. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. Oh, that's another one. Don't forget to do that. But when you lay down at night, pray. Because the Bible warns that while men slept in Matthew 13, the enemy comes in and sows tares among the wheat and went his way. This is how the devil gets down. Most of the time, he don't come at you direct when you wide awake. He waits till you go to sleep and slithers in. God forbid, but he attack, they'll attack you in your sleep. <laughs> so pray before you go to sleep. And if any sleep disturbances have, get up and begin to pray. And if you can't sleep, get up and begin to pray. You want to sleep? You want to sleep well, especially for those of you who know how to pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit as you go to sleep. The devil don't want you praying long. You'll fall asleep real quick. I just wake up. That's just I just got myself in a habit of doing. Praying before I go to sleep. As I turn over in the middle of the night, you know, you got to make that trip to the restroom. Pray. You're awake. Time to pray. Next time I know and I'm not saying I'm super spiritual and I'm not better than you. We should always be praying. Somebody somewhere in this earth, saved or unsaved, needs that prayer. Remember, the devil is always him and his minions roaming around seeking whom he may devour. And we are even standing in the gap for those that ain't even saved yet. Praise the Lord. Okay. I hope that helps you guys. You're not crazy. If you get all of a sudden uh, you're, uh, a, a dramatic shift tries to come upon you for your mood, fear, or depression, because anxiety is fear, y'all. This is another reason not to like some of this stuff. They, they, they slide the name so you don't realize what it is. Oh, this is, this is anxiety. It's fear. And the Bible says fear has torment. And God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Because fear tries to pull you into <laughs> not, not a sound mind and worrying and, and obsessing about things, which is not of God. Okay. And he, he can give you peace in your mind. Ask him, thank him for his peace in your mind, body, and soul. Stand against the enemy. Get you some good scriptures that declare who you are in Christ, what he has done for you. Get you a list, have them and speak them aloud. That is the one thing that I do like about word of faith. They didn't give us anything else, but that is true because the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It's not because I'm declaring it. It's because he has declared it and I'm getting in agreement with what he has declared. I'm mixing my faith with what the Lord has declared. And there is power in that. So before I go, I said, I wanted to say hi to everybody. I didn't forget Jordan was first. If I don't say that, I'll, I'll never hear the end of it. Jordan was first in the chat tonight. And he let everybody know it. He said first. Toph was second. Thank you for joining me, Toph. Again, Spider Monkey, glad to see you. Dear brother in the Lord. Then Ray Ray, thank you for joining me. The Blue Bunny, the ice cream lady from the land down under. Thank you for joining me. Let's see who else is here. Celine, good to see you, girl. You hang in there. You just keep trusting the Lord. In due time, if it is meant to be, you know, I don't want to put your business in the street, but it will happen. Just be patient, wait on the Lord. And then, let's see. Who else? Did I miss anybody? Is that it? And shout out to mom if she's listening. She doesn't always pop in the chat and I'm late calling her so I'm about to jump off so I call mom Sydney thank you for joining me Sydney Baker God soldier Dylan thank you for joining me I hope this was a blessing to you haven't seen you in a while OUDC I'm not going to even try to pronounce that I'm just going to say OUDC haven't seen you in a while praise the Lord 
And let's see, anybody else? Okay, I think that's it. Oh, I hope I didn't miss anybody. If I did, 1,000 pardons. I'm going to play one song <laughs> that I'll tell her that you said hi. She'll appreciate that. Thank you, Ray Ray. But y'all remember, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. I thought I had my other song queued up uh, tonight for the podcast, and I just realized when I was going through them, it's not here, <laughs> which was more than conquerors, but that's all right. I'm going to just play this one, another one of my favorites by Janny who went home to be with the Lord. Can't wait to see her again in heaven. I did have the pleasure of meeting her one time when she visited our church. But I, I pray that all of you will have a wonderful rest of the week. Saturday, Jordan and I are off because it's my family day. Last week, uh, I did the other stream. I hope y'all checked that one out. Boy, I was hot on that one because of the lies that's going on in the earth, especially in the pulpit. But uh, then we'll be back the following week with some interesting topics to discuss on late night with Lisa and friends, but we're off this Saturday night. I don't know if I'll jump on. If I do, it'll be super late because when I get done with them and by the time I get back home, it's super late. So if I have the energy, I might try it. If not, then I'll see you next week. Figuratively speaking, be blessed, beloved of the most high God in the mighty name of King Jesus. Amen. When I was broken, in spirit and soul There was no one around Who would love me Stumbling in darkness Fear had me bound There was only one Who could see me I want to tell everybody about